I don't know why I began writing. I started when I was nine years old. I was a weird kid. I would just stay in my room typing. I found this old typewriter up in the attic. I dragged it down to my room and I started typing little magazines, little funny magazine. Tales to drive you insane. Tales to drive you batty. Just funny magazines and writing short stories. And my mother would be outside, always saying, out my room saying, go outside and play. What's the matter with you? And I'm in there typing. I can't. I'm writing a novel. I'm nine years old. I don't know why I thought it was so interesting. So I do these little magazines. And I was a very shy kid, very shy and not social at all. And I, maybe this is one reason I stayed in my room writing this stuff. But I would bring it into school and try to get attention from the other kids. And I'd bring these little magazines and I would pass them around to my friends. And the teachers would always grab them and say, Bob, please, please stop. I, and when I speak at schools now, kids always ask me, they say, did your teachers encourage you to write when you were a kid? And I always have to, if I'm being honest, I have to say they tried to get me to stop. Um, I have one rule, and I've been doing this a long time, so I pretty much know what's too scary, what's you know, not scary enough. My editors are, usually are asking me to make things scarier. I'm pretty conservative, because I don't really, you don't really want to terrify kids. You want to creep them out a little bit, but you don't really want to terrify them. And my, what I try is I make sure that the kids know that these books are fantasies and keep the real world out. So I don't do real serious subjects. So I, you know, I, I, I don't even have divorced parents. I wouldn't do child abuse or drugs. or I wouldn't do anything in the real world. They have to know that these are just fantasies and they're not really happening. And then you can get, you know, once you've established that, you can get pretty scary. Yes, I was a funny guy for a long time. I started out, I just wanted to write humor. I write humor for kids. My very first book was called How to Be Funny. It was about how to get big laughs at the dinner table and how to get laughs in school. And parents hated it. They hated this book. And, but I wrote humor. I wrote joke books, 101 monster jokes and joke books for years. I did maybe 100 of them. And um, I had a great time. I did this humor magazine called Bananas for 10 years. It was sort of mad magazine, but it was all in color. and It was, it was great. I, this is all I ever wanted to do. I couldn't believe it. And uh, when that ended, I figured I would just coast for the rest of my career. I would just coast. <laughs> that was it. I'd already done what I wanted to do. I had no idea what was coming up. I wrote 87 Goosebumps books. That's a lot of books for a human, isn't it? And um, it was... Uh, None of us expected what happened with Goosebumps. We started it in 1992, and by 1994, and I was doing one a month, turning out a Goosebumps a month, and it was doing okay, doing okay for a while, and then just took off like nothing we'd ever seen. We've been in publishing a long time. It took off all over the world. Through not through advertising or hype or anything, through promotions, just kids telling kids. It was some, there's some kind of secret kids network out there. And just kids telling kids about it. And this thing grew all over, everywhere. It was in 28 languages. And at one point, after a couple years, we were selling 4 million Goosebumps books a month. Well, a rotten school is just zany. It's just crazy. And you just, you know, try to come up with really funny characters and put them in horrible situations and see what happens. And I have this, this kid, Bernie Bridges, who's just this con man who's always out to, to win. And he has an arch enemy in the school, the spoiled rich kid, Sherman Oaks. And Bernie lives in a dorm called Rotten House. And he, he and his buddies live in this dorm. And they pick the third floor because it's good for dropping things out the window on people. And Sherman lives across the lawn on this campus in Nice House. I don't know who would want to live in Nice House, but Sherman Oaks and his pals live in Nice House. And so it's a constant battle 
between the two groups. And Sherman is always showing off his new things. He has, a, a, in one of the early books, Sherman's parents have bought him a new digital watch that has 42 different functions. It has a keyboard on it and a CD player and a movie thing, and it's got a small George Foreman grill on his watch. And Bernie sees this watch, he says, oh, I have to have it. I have to have that watch. And the book is about how Bernie goes about taking that watch away from Sherman Oaks. The Reading Rockets Meet the Author series is a production of WETA. Major funding for Reading Rockets comes from the United States Department of Education, Office of Special Education Programs. For more author interviews, recommended reading lists, and information about teaching kids to read, please visit us online at www.readingrockets.org.